In this video, I'm going to show you how to play against the centre game with a minimum amount of fuss, with no lengthy variations that you need to memorise, and it's going to feature sound logical chess. So let's crack on with it. Okay, so I'm going to be looking at this from the black point of view, but certainly if you're a white player and you're, you're interested in the centre game, then you might find something of interest as well. But predominantly, I'm looking at it from, from the black perspective. So the centre game comes about after e4, e5, and then d4 on move 2. And what white is looking to do is just to get a simple kind of attacking game. And, you know, really, does it does work. It's, it's not a bad opening. I don't think it's particularly... Very, very good, but it's certainly playable. It's not a, it's not a junk open at all. Why it's not trying to sort of find a trap or anything like that, although there are tactics in the position. And what I'm recommending in this uh, video is that we take the pawn on d4, okay? Uh, the reason why is I just think it's the simplest way forward, and I th also think it's the best way forward. So two, two good reasons, really. Uh, so after the queen takes, we're going to hit with knight c6, and we're going to gain a tempo on the queen. So I'm going to explore that line a little bit, uh, just after I show you why I think it taking is, is the best option, really. Because the alternative to taking the pawn would be knight c6 or d6. All right, now d6 is not a very good option, because after the capture... And then black's kind of forced, forced to capture that, otherwise we're just down a pawn. And then white can just go into this end game, which I think is just better for white. And black's not got options to castle at all. So I don't think d6 is very good. Knight c6 uh, is the next best alternative. But after this move, I mean, we could go into a capture, but d5 I think could be uncomfortable for the beginner player because then you've got to play the knight to e7. And, you know, it's a little bit before we're going to get to develop the bishop and it's a little bit slower a little bit messy you know it's perfectly playable you know the knight can come here the knight can come here we can get the bishop out eventually then castle but i think for a beginner player i think it's just best just to play more simple and get the pieces out okay so let's look at the main position so after e4 e5 d4 i recommend that we take the pawn and the queen will recapture and then we hit with knight c6 gaining the tempo on the queen now the main move here uh, at master level is bringing the queen to e3. Uh, also popular uh, at higher levels is, is queen c4. But at uh, intermediate and beginner level, queen d1 is very, very popular. It's tying with e3 and also queen a4 and even queen d3. Basically, the queen can move anywhere uh, when we hit the queen. But it doesn't matter because from our point of view, we're going to play the same move. So I'll just put the queen on e3, and our response, regardless, is going to be the same. It was going to be knight f6. I was going to recommend knight f6, but then uh, I found a Magnus Carlsen game and uh, where Magnus Carlsen went with the immediate check, and I think this is going to be the better move, and I think it's the one that I'm actually going to recommend in this video. The reason for that is uh, not just to follow Magnus Carlsen, although you know I have heard he's a pretty decent player. Uh, the reason for it is that uh, it limits White's choices, right? So it's easier for the black to respond, right? Because black's white's got a limited amount of moves back. You know, you can't, obviously, let's put that on the board. So after this move with check, white has to deal with the check. So it's, it's much easier for us to deal with. Uh, so options include knight c3, bishop d2, c3. Sometimes the knight can come to uh, d2. And these are the main moves. Now, the good news for our point of view is it seems intermediate level and beginner levels, c3 is quite popular, which is not a good move. And the reason it's not a good move is it just weakens this queenside position. And, you know, in a lot of the lines, white seems to want to play queenside, so castle queenside. So this is just weakening for no particular reason. And what we'll do against this move is just drop the bishop back to a5. And then later on, we've always got this come into a nice, lovely little square. Because I assume that then white's going to have to castle kingside instead. And, you know, and if the queen is on e3, then obviously we've got a free tempo at this point. So to c3... If we see c3 on the board, we have bishop check, we see c3, fantastic, we're already in a better position. So against any of the other moves, if uh, either knight c3, knight d2, or indeed bishop d2, we're going to play knight f6. Now obviously, that's if the queen is on e3. If, if white chooses to come to c4, uh, then we can still check, but af after uh, d2... Obviously, we can't play knight f6 because we'll just be a piece down, right? Uh, also, in this position, uh, I will point out that there's like 400,000 people that go queen c3, which we play a normal move anyway. We win the queen, which is, would be nice and handy. Uh, but if the queen is on e3, after the bishop of check, 
then if bishop d2, we're going to leave, we're not going to uh, move the bishop or two, we're just going to leave it there, okay? Because if we're going to play knight f6, and if captures, we take back with the knight, and then we're immediately threatening the knight folk, and white has to move the queen again. So that, that just benefits us, really. So if the queen is on c4 or a4, after we bishop check, you know, if bishop does come to d2, then I think the easiest thing is just to exchange takes and then carry on with our plan, which is going to be knight f6 and then castle e8, rook e8. So back to this position then, and it's the same setup. So if, if knight to c3, we go knight f6 and we prepare to castle and rook e8. Okay, so that's basically, it's a bare bones setup that you really need to know. So here's a tactical position that uh, you need to know that uh, might arise. Uh, from from that mainline position and in this position uh, it's the best move is just to take the e4 pawn right uh, because after knight takes knight takes we can play rook takes and at some point d5 uh, we'll see this in the angus carlson game i'm going to show you in a minute now the reason why we need to do that is because it might seem natural to try and chop off this knight first and then take like this but obviously there's a bit of a downside with that is that we lose to checkmate <laughs> so i just thought i'd point that out because I, I saw that tactic earlier on and i thought i better point that out okay so i'm going to show you the magnus carlson game then and it's just going to give you a basic overview of the type of thing to expect from this sort of line okay so the game obviously goes e4 e5 d4 and then pawn takes and if the pawn takes queen takes knight c6 uh the queen drops back to e3 and then we play our move, which is bishop b4 check, regardless of where the queen goes anyway. And in the game, we had knight c3, knight f6, which is our move, bishop d2, and then we can carry out our plan. Anything that doesn't prevent us from carrying out our plan, a simple basic castle in, and then rook e8, we, we can do, like in this game. And then white goes queen side, rook e8. And now this move allows a tactic straight away, which is fairly early in the game. Uh, Magnus Carlsen uh, takes the knight with the bishop and then swoops in with the rook with a nice tempo on the queen. The uh, queen retreats and then d5 in order to free up the bishop more than to support the uh, actual rook itself. Although it did obviously have that function as well. And then Magnus Carlsen comes up with a really nice idea of uh, pushing this a pawn. And sticking a knight on b4. And uh, white doesn't really deal with that very well. Because after takes, takes. And then a3 hitting the knight. Magnus Carlsen comes up with a cracker. Right. And see if you can spot this. You can pause it if you want. Right. It's just to completely ignore the uh, attack on the uh, knight. Because of the sort of fishing pull style tactics. Which opens the a, a file. And then after this it's just all over really. We get into this position, and we know we're threatening checkmate here. We're threatening to take the rook and then check and bring another checkmate here. So white takes this pawn, which saves this square. But after this, uh, I think Magnus plays this. And I think I think there was resignation at this point because if king takes, then like I say, a queen check on the first rank followed by checkmate. So there we go. That's a, a game, just a very quick game highlighting how how wrong it can go for for white, but. Really just showing us what we need to do for, for our sort of basic opening setup, which is going to get us into the game without any problems. All right, so thanks for watching and goodbye.